Morning and welcome to our bite sized session this morning on how to manage overseas debt. I am Amy Swindles, the Head of International Professional Services at Greater Manchester Chamber, and I'm joined today by uh, Sally Nolan um, from our partner Engage. And I'm going to hand the presentation over to her shortly. Um, she's the Business Development Director there. Next slide, please. So I um, know there's a few new people on the call today. So for those of you who don't know, um, we are Greater Manchester Chamber. We are a membership organisation covering 10, the 10 local authority areas in Greater Manchester. Um, we have over 4,500 members and on the screen there you can see the top three sectors um, where our membership sits. Next slide please. Very proud of uh, some of these recent awards we've one, particularly our um, award-winning international trade team. So uh, we have a range of services and we've won the uh, British Chambers of Commerce Excellence in International Trade Services for the past two years. Slide, please. Um, so what do we do? How can we help you? So um, we have a team of 10 in the international trade team and we support exporters and importers trade with pretty much every country in the world, whether that's what if you're new to your export or import journey or whether you are more experienced and you're looking for help with the documentation with customs and compliance next slide please um, so there you go if you want help reaching new markets we can help with a readiness assessment identifying new markets via our market identification services and also with market research and connecting you with customers with agents and with distributors um, across the world um, and if you're more um, um, experienced and you're looking for support with the compliance side, customs, paperwork, um, export controls, um, anything like that, then we also have a range of support on offer for people that are looking for support maybe post-Brexit or if you're um, wanting um, help and lead up to HMRC audits, we have a team as well of associates that can help you through that. Hi, please. Um, also um, help you upskill, so lots of uh, support on export documentation and on training, um, methods of payment, letters of credit, anything like that, please contact the team and we'll be happy to offer you uh, further guidance. Um, and that's um, it from me. Uh, on the screen now, you can just see our um, upcoming events. We'll share these links with you as well. So if there's anything there that you're interested in finding more about, we are going to take a slight break from our bite-sized sessions after today and we're going to resume in September with the session on CE marking. So we do run these fortnightly uh, and we'll be back in September um, well, virtually and then hopefully we might have some physical um, bite-sized sessions towards the end of the year. Um, so now I'm just going to launch our first poll of today uh, just to see um, who we've got on the call and to help Sally with her presentation. So um, what would you say describes best your company's export experience? So are you new, are you occasional exporter, are you experienced or is it not applicable to you? So just give you a minute to answer that. Couple more seconds. Great. If I just share those results with you. Um, so we can see we've got um, mainly um, experienced exporters and um, all those that aren't exporting classed as uh, not applicable today. So um, I'm going to hand over to you now, Sally, um, over to you for the uh, presentation today. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Firstly, many thanks to the Chamber for hosting this presentation and a huge thanks to those who have taken the time out of your mornings to come along and listen. Um, the presentation and the contact details will all be available at the end of today. So if you think of anything, uh, any questions or you want to drop me a message, please do feel free to. Uh, the main three takeaways from this session I'm hoping will be credit control best practice and knowing your customers, the impact of bad debt and obviously what engaged services offer and how we can save your business time effort and ultimately help you get paid. Okay, so first slide, please. Brilliant. Well, I'll start with a brief introduction to myself. I started my career in um, business and finance, working my way through the three major credit insurance. So that's EULA, COFAS and Atradius. Um, after 12 years in credit, I moved to Marston Holdings, Engage, to head up the commercial collections offering within this business. 
Martin Holding started out 40 years ago with enforcing court orders. And since then we've grown organically and through acquisition to provide a multitude of end-to-end -end services. And we now recover over 850 million pound each year on behalf of our clients. Under the company Engage and established in 1994, Engage Commercial Collections, who are an award-winning global commercial collections, uh, provides receivable management solutions to clients worldwide across all industries. Working closely in partnership with clients ensures the delivery of a consistently high level of service with a dedicated account manager and a live feed portal. Uh, your business is at the heart of every action that we take and we work on a strictly no win, no fee basis. So essentially, we don't get paid until you do. Assisted by our panel of in-country solicitors, we have a global reach and a workforce of over 350 collectors with decades of experience. Engage is trusted by some of the world's largest companies to manage their credit control, age debt and recovery processes, including major IT software companies, right through to household travel company names. And I'm sure you can imagine the debt in this area in particular at the moment is substantial. We understand the importance of key strategic partnerships and business relationships. Money owed to clients is recovered using a strategic combination of digital, human and partner supported processes. And this helps to open up a productive dialogue with your business and your clients. Now, having spent the last six to 12 months dialing into endless WebExes and Zoom calls with economists and credit insurance and credit agencies, the absolute buzzword at the moment is zombie business or zombie economy, which is the byproduct of the past 18 months of COVID. And I'll explain why knowing this phrase is important and why it ties into what we can offer and why you need to be aware of it in the coming months of easing lockdown. In a nutshell, a zombie business is essentially neither dead or alive, it's just simply existing. It's a business which is covering its interests on its indebtedness. Although heavily indebted, but under no pressure to access, there's no particular credit crunch at the moment, and there's no volatility in interest rates. So there's no immediate pressure for them. The zombie business is a company who is being artificially propped up by COVID support measures. Companies which would have failed had they not have had the support measures and may fail once they're withdrawn. The business is just tying up its capital, financial capital and human capital and meandering along. And there are thousands and thousands of these businesses out there supported by the COVID protective measures, which have just been extended to the end of September. So, for example, restrictions on staff demanding and petitioning, whereby you have to be able to demonstrate that the debt you're petitioning for is non-COVID related and any insolvency isn't related to COVID. And these can be a very timely and costly exercise and this is going to continue for some time. So if you have a business which is a zombie business, which is paying or not paying, what do you do? It's all about payments and it's all about cash. The business will be running hand to mouth, often robbing Peter to pay Paul. They will be struggling to pay as they cannot get their cash in. However, it's very difficult to distinguish which are genuinely struggling and which have always functioned in this way. And the old days of, I know my customer, they always pay me on time, are long gone. And this le leads us nicely into the next slide, please. So broadly speaking, there are two approaches to credit control. There's proactive and reactive, and both have their good and bad points. Most companies opt for reactive, which involves specific initial credit control at the start, statements, conversations, etc., and then chasing when required. In order for reactive to work, you must have regular conversations with debtors and build relationships. Be strong enough to test those relationships when payments stretch beyond agreed terms. Have a watch list of debtors you know will create additional work and keep close to these debtors at all time. Have clear and pre-agreed sanctions in place for late payments. And be ready to escalate this if necessary to a full collections process and perhaps legal action. Next slide, please. So under a proactive approach, you should have additional knowledge of the company via either a credit reference agency report credit insurance policy and KYC and diligence checks. And we'll come back to this when I cover our offerings later on. Build relationships from day one. Who is my point of contact for payment processing? 
And what information does the debtor need to process invoices? Set agreed cre credit limits right from the offset. Have set processes in place from day one, e.g. Do, do we issue our invoice on X date every month? Our payment run is X date every month. We send out statements on this day and we start chasing you on this day. Make sure all invoices are set out the same way for every invoice is submitted. The debtor knows what to expect from you then each month and every time. This will limit the amount of queries on invoices. Review credit limits monthly, quarterly and adjust your internal limits accordingly. Have clear and pre-agreed sanctions in place for late payments. Be ready to escalate if necessary and deal with the best clients and avoid the risks. So both appro approaches have their merits and both are designed to keep bad debt to a minimum. However, even when best practice in place, debtors can fall over. In today's market, I would suggest the reactive approach comes with a much higher risk. I once had a client I managed to a credit insurance policy who, due to the length of payment terms on their product, would never actually be able to make a claim on the insurance as it didn't fall in line with any of the terms of the policy. I think it was something to do with manufacturing installations which had a 10 year payment plan on them. They did, however, have the most robust credit checking system in place I've ever seen because they knew they would never be able to claim. They ensured that they knew every detail of their clients before they signed any kind of sales contract. These checks included things such as credit reference agency scores, credit insurance ratings, a full set of latest filed accounts and a last set of available up to date accounts along with a whole host of other checks. So in essence, with the market about to become volatile with the end of government support for businesses, it is an absolute must that your business is on top of its credit control procedures and checks. Credit insurance companies are already seeing the drip feed of business going under and late payment reports are increasing and they expect this to continue at a much more rapid rate once loans and funding are due to be paid back within the coming, coming months. Next slide, please. Thank you. So what's the impact of bad debt? One of the most obvious consequences of experienced bad debt is that your business cash flow is disrupted, resulting in lowered profitability. Consequently, the investment plans of businesses that have experienced bad debt can become delayed with an absolute worst case scenario is that the victims of bad debt become um, being insolvency. The average profit margin in the UK is 10% according to the Office for National Statistics. So a loss at 10,000 would result in you having to do 100,000 in additional turnover in order to offset the loss. And for the average SME business, this figure is simply unattainable. Like I said earlier, it's too easy to say, I deal with good clients, my clients are strong. I'm sure the hundreds of contractors that were taken down by Carillion, for example, wouldn't agree. And the 500 Spanish hotels that closed down when Thomas Cook went bust and the thousands of small businesses that supplied those hotels. And when Hasbro and Mattel received only pennies in the pound following the collapse of Toys R Us, putting jobs and entire supply chains at risk. So you may have strong customers, you may have strong suppliers, but what about their customers and their suppliers? The insolvency domino effect is a real and ever present danger. And there's two thoughts on this. A customer goes bust, Two obvious problems. How do you get paid and who do you sell to now? A supplier goes bust. Where do you get your components and your raw materials? These are the bad points, scary times, and they're the obvious immediate questions to ask and identify. The surprising news, however, is that it's not just when things go badly that problems can arise. Sometimes what looks to be a positive development can cause problems too. So say, for example, your main competitor goes bust. Hooray, the market's all yours now. But the local supplier also supplies you and they've been pulled down too. So now you've got no local supplier. You're obliged to look further afield and that will push up your transport costs. And there may even be tariffs to pay if that new supplier is overseas. And you're a new customer in an industry that has just seen a major insolvency. Your competitor. So the new supplier requires payment up front and won't give you credit, credit terms just yet. 
Now you've got cash flow problems to manage. And will the bank help you finance? Maybe, maybe not, because your competitor's demise has also made the banks a bit jittery about the whole sector. And all of this because of a bad debt. And of course, we still have the obvious questions. How will I get paid? Who will I sell my goods to? And most important question of all, will this bad debt also take me down? Now, having an efficient credit control set up cannot prevent bad debt alone. It can, however, ensure that you are mitigating as much risk of this happening to your business as absolutely possible. Next slide, please. Strong know your customer processes will provide an additional layer of protection, as will diligence. An enhanced diligence checking would include the following things, such as adopting a risk-based approach and assigning a level of risk for each and every client. Obtain additional ID verifications. Standard DD would ask for one piece of ID. Enhanced ask for multiple and looks for bills, bank statements, as much information as they are and willing to provide. Make sure you know who you're dealing with, not just the trading company, but who actually owns it. Is there a holding company? Is there a parent company above that? Is there a complex ownership? Who is the UBO, ultimate beneficial owner? Track and monitor every transaction. Are there any disputes? Do they pay on time? Are there correct amounts? Are there invoice queries that they could be using as a delaying tactic? Watch the news feed. Are there any adverse media reports out there? And are there hearsay or is it an actual cause for concern? Stay away from Google Maps. Visit the debtor's premises. And be very wary indeed of deliveries to be made to third party addresses. Have a clear default strategy in place and stick to it. Next slide, please. So, not to sound like an old record, but there are in, these are indeed unprecedented times. And you may find a little extra assistance from the experts could help ensure your business continues long past the days of COVID. By creating Europe's largest recoveries and receivable management company, Marston and Gage have a group of companies accessible through one single point of contact for clients to benefit from its multiple services. We believe that this approach will benefit businesses and their clients by allowing the development of a strategic partnership and supplying services that meet the ever-changing requirements of their global client debtor book. Each company with Engage Services Limited offer varied expertise from credit management, debt collection, legal assistance and high court enforcement. All are connected, share a common infrastructure and drive to provide professional and efficient service and a commitment to achieving results for the clients. In the first instance, we have boots on the ground in over 120 countries worldwide. So say, for example, you're trying to navigate your way into an emerging market but do not currently have a presence there. You may want to do a check on some new potential clients, see their premises, get some in-country reports. We can assist. We can undertake your KYC checks on your behalf and set to your requirements. We can also do this in the UK and Ireland. Trace and investigation. We provide a full range of professional trace and investigation and property inspection services, which can be tailored to meet your specific needs. As a member of the Association of British Investigators, the only association fully endorsed by the Law Society of England and Wales, these services can be provided across the UK and internationally. We offer three levels of fixed fee service on this. We've got standard, urgent and same day. These fixed fee investigatory services can be offered as a desktop only, field only or a combination of both. And they include under tracing services, we do data location, beneficiary research, people tracing, missing person inquiries and employment tracing. Under investigation, we do pre-litigation reports, asset tracing, desktop pre-sue, means inquiries, corporate investigations, intelligence gathering, brand protection, trademark and copyright infringements, pre-employment screening, background checks, field inquiries, interviews and financial statements, general litigation and support services. 
and under process serving, we serve of legal and non-legal process, court attendances and collection services. We also offer field services within the UK and Ireland and our field services team operate as your eyes and ears and an in-house contact centre uses the latest technology to link addressees, to locate, validate and reconnect you with your customers, whether they be people or businesses. This enables you to track, this enables you to keep track of what is happening, whether in the UK or Ireland, the property or assets might be. Following inspection visits, our agents provide detailed reports that give instance, that give instant access to meaningful data. Handheld technology provides GPS evidence, as well as photographs, signatures, and voice recordings of conversations where required. Engage actively support clients in the following ways. Property checks and inspections, vacant or occupied ver verification, single or multiple occupancy, property condition, landlord reports, store checks, warehouse consignment, stock verification, liquidation stocks. We also do public sector checks and we do process serving and tracing. Commercial debt collection based on a no win, no fee commission. There really is, there really is no logic in not outsourcing your collections. Imagine the time and effort you could save your credit team by passing this process over to the experts, allowing them to then focus on that more intrinsic KYC checking or reviewing new sales opportunities, allowing them to focus on the growth and looking forward rather than to the past. Our collection strategies can be bespoke and as in-depth or as hands-off as required. We have clients who have a two-week turnaround time for collection action, and we have others who have, say, three months. We understand the importance of client relationships. Now, a key focus is on ensuring they remain strong whilst getting you paid. Again, utilising our agents across the globe, we understand and know best practices in each country. For example, Dubai and the Middle East do a lot of business communication through text messaging. And so that is where our focus can be for this country. This ensures we are not only using the best communication communication method for the area, but that we also are able to be effectively communicating and show our presence as the biggest collection company within Europe. In addition to our collection services, we also have links with legal assistance all over the world. And at the end of any unsuccessful collection strategy, we'll offer a report on best next steps through any legal jurisdiction, offering guidance on costs and procedures within that respective country. There is no additional cost for the service and the choice to progress any case to legal is entirely yours. You are in control every step of the way. Our collectors have a wealth of experience and knowledge in their field and their main goal is to get you paid have a reconnection service whereby we help to bridge the gap with customers who have not proactively kept in touch but may be in need of some support. This vital service enables clients to determine and offer the most appropriate support path and recovery strategies for individuals according to their circumstances. And with access to over 280 FCA registered rep representatives, all using the latest bespoke technology to deliver a, a professional evidence-based service capturing photographs, signatures, and all your set required information, including audio recordings. We can set up tailored visits to your clients to assist in reconnecting them with yourselves. Finally, we have High Court and Litigation Services. Court order enforcement in England and Wales is regulated by the Tribunals Court and Enforcement Act 2007, which sets clear, fixed and transparent fees for each stage of this activity. The training, expertise and size of the, and geographic coverage of mass and enforcement agent network is unrivaled. And we work with over 280 local authorities and central government departments to recover unpaid debts and fines on behalf of our clients. All of the above services can be utilised either independently or as a package of services. As we all come under the same heading and work in unison, any policy with us gives you access to the surrounding support network of services. So to summarise, the takeaways I mentioned at the beginning 
wanted to be credit control, best practices, and knowing your customers, the impacts of bad debt, what engaged services offer, and how we can save your business time, effort, and money, ultimately helping you get paid. The landscape in which we work is changing and is going to continue changing. And your business and the businesses you work with need to adjust and adapt to those changes. There is increased risk of failure and overdue payments happening now and is going to continue to happen. It's not a case of if, but when. The time to be vigilant is now in order to ensure the survival of your business post pandemic. Engaged services have the knowledge, expertise and experience worldwide to take on aspects of your credit control function. So your team and your business can focus on growth and survival. Let us help you navigate your way through these times ahead and ultimately ensure that you get paid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sally. You've got Sally's details there. Um, and obviously, please do get in touch with the team. Um, does anybody have any, uh, well, we'll go to the next poll and then um, if you do have any questions whilst we're answering, if you can just type them in the Q&A or the chat box. Um, Simon, I think you have your hand up. I did message you, but um, I don't know if you've done it by accident, but if you want to send us a, a message or anything, then please do. So this poll is about um, trading with the EU and what you're doing regarding customs. Which may not impact everybody, but I'll just give you a few more seconds. Okay, thank you. So we have um, 33% of people are using a cus existing customs agent and then the majority of people on this call it's not applicable to, which is uh, absolutely fine. And the last poll. Which is all about Brexit and the movement of goods since the 1st of Jan. So if you can just answer with how easy you found that, have you found it difficult? a few more seconds and again uh, most majority of people on the call this isn't applicable to um 33 percent of you have found it very difficult thank you for the feedback we're just gathering this feedback at each of these sessions and um, if you are finding it difficult please do get in touch and, and see how the chamber can support you if it's you know paperwork customs tariffs duties that anything like that please get in touch and we'll see um who we can connect you with to help um okay so if we move on to the q a um simon did you have a question i can only see Sally, this is, so Simon's asking a question. Um, what date do you expect the end to the government e easements to start the increase of businesses to failing? Say that again. Um, when do you expect, so, so now with all the government support easing, when do you expect the, the business fail, failing? When do you expect this to kind of start and see this in your area? Uh, we're, already, we're already seeing it. Um, the credit insurance companies that I'm connected with have already started reporting that the um, the reporting of overdues is, is starting to increase now. Um, over the past 12 to 18 months, I think they've had the lowest rate of claims and um, reporting of overdues because the government funding has held up all of these businesses. Um, so they've not been having the, the reporting as they usually do, but they are starting to see the drip feed of this now. I believe the support ends uh, the end of September this year. So I'm thinking it's only going to get worse and come September, October, the final quarter of the year, it's, uh, it's not going to be good times. Okay, thank you. Um, and Sally, I think from our side, I know a question we get a lot in the international team is, 
We had a, um, a company contact us. They've got some outstanding debt. I know recently we had one in, in UAE. What would be the process when we connected them with yourselves? How would that work or engage and work with you? It would be a very simple question and answer session from myself. It would be size of the debt, age of the debt, location. Um, do you have any other debts? Uh, and then it would simply be a case of setting a commission rate on the back of that. If Obviously, if it's one debt that you have, um, we don't we don't say no to anything. So if it's one debt, we'll work it. If you have a book of hundreds, 200 debts, we'll work it. Obviously, the more work we get, the lower the commission will be. But our, our commission rates tend to sit around between 8 and 15 percent. OK, great. And um, what about um, success rates? Um, success rates actually have increased over the last 18 months during COVID. We put it down to we changed our strategy slightly from phone calls and letters to being predominantly more sort of email based. And because people are working from home and tend to be sat um, in front of their computers, we've had much more uptake um, and much more response from the different strategy, um, obviously using a more technology based strategy with the emails. The success rates, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can certainly find out. Thank you. Um, and I think we've got another question from Johnson um, regarding the importance of insurance. Do you have, is the information, are you wanting some information about the importance of insurance, Johnson? Is that your question? Not sure if you can post to us. Or I can perhaps unmute you and you can ask. You should be able to unmute yourself now if you want to ask yes, a question. Problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm just uh, wondering about um, at this time of pandemic, um, and from the the discussion that we've had, um, what is the relation of insurance to all this? Insurance, uh, are insurance being paid? Uh, or when one does not insure, is it not so bad for business? Um, obviously, having worked in credit insurance for 12 years, I would highly recommend that you do get insurance. Um, it just is a protection against your business. Um, insurers, as far as I'm aware, have been writing credit limits. They have been supporting their businesses. Um, whether that's going to change over the next 12 months as the debts and the claims start to increase, that tends to be what happens. But I always think it's better to have than not have. I have a lot of contacts in the insurance market. If you want me to, if you want to get in touch with me, I can certainly put you in touch with someone um, from the insurance market who'll be able to provide you with a lot more in-depth information. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I think I'm having some problems with my internet connection. Thanks, John. Yeah. I think we may have lost Amy. Yeah, I think she's frozen. So um, from the chat, I don't know if there's any more questions. Um, if anyone wants to put them in the chat in the Q&A. Um, if not, I think we'll just um, move on. Oh. Amy, are you back? No, I think she's struggling. Your ladies, do we have any more polls or any uh, um, slides to conclude? Mm, okay. No, I think that's it. Just um, to thank everyone for joining us today. And if you have any questions, um, oh, yeah, so we, we also have, have the feedback poll, poll yeah. yes, on the screen. Uh, so this will uh, help us um, improve our events in the future as well. And if you have any questions on the last slide, there's our contact as well. You can um, contact Solidarily or ourselves with any um, international trade queries.